You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. So, Rick, I know you want 2016 to die in a fire. Is that what I heard earlier Earlier, when you were on your show with Dan Wright? Yeah, die in a fire slowly, painfully, you know, just, just needs to go away. That well, about sums up how I feel about 2016. Well, I know we've done lots of year in review shows on the station. But I wanted to do one more, but I thought you'd be okay with this one. Why wouldn't I be? Well, this one's the par- year in review with parody songs. I figured there's got to be a few laughs in our sound banks. Yeah, more than a few. Exactly, mostly thanks to Beaker and JD and Stacy and some old shows that are unfortunately no longer with us. But I went through and dug up a couple of them. Now, let's see what I can find. Happy Holidays. I'm Barack Obama. What makes this country I love so great are the traditions we hold so near and dear. Especially around this time of year, the holidays. Uh, One thing we like to do at the White House is uh, gather around the fireplace, uh, burn pages of the Constitution, and uh, sing holiday songs. But uh, just like the Constitution, I feel that most of these songs are outdated, antiquated. I promise change with my pen. And that's why I sat down and wrote for you. We're rocking around the holiday tree. A White House celebration. It's a compilation of my favorite holiday classics. Redone and belted out by yours truly. But just like most American traditions, I seek to uh, change them completely. Make them almost unrecognizable. For example, here's one of my favorites. Obamacare, Obamacare, we love your new exchanges. Obamacare, Obamacare, shred the Constitution's pages. Uh, The website's down, but just today, we're very close to single pay. Obamacare, Obamacare, we love your new exchanges. Or how about this rendition of an old holiday classic? One of my favorites. Rocking around the holiday tree at the White House x Miss Bash. Celebrating Kwanzaa with Jay-Z. And once again, Joe Biden is trash. So, Rick, what do you think of those? That had to be one of my favorite songs that, uh, we actually ran that one at the end of 2015 for last year. I actually forgot it was in there. I'd have been using it again this year. Um, but yeah, I know, that, that... but <clears throat> I dug it up for you. And I know it kind of goes back to 2015, but Obama was still president this Christmas. And, well, I just thought it was funny. Because I started putting this together before I even talked to you about it. I was digging through the database going, what can I find? There's got to be something good in here. There's got to be good in here. Because I've also been working on another episode that you're not going to be part of until you hear it. Do you know what that one is? I'm afraid to ask. The annual blooper reel? Oh, yeah, you told me about that one. (laughs) But I'm not letting anybody help me put it together, Rick. I'm doing it all by myself. You don't know how many hours of shows I've listened to to pull this off. But I've got a few snafus from most people. Oh, boy. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a conniving little sucker. So, all right. Now, I've got another one we won't be able to use next year. This one, let me see if I can find it here. Well, in the same vein, Rick, here's another one I think you'll get a kick out of. It's a little more upbeat than the last one. Obama got run over by a reindeer. Walking from the White House Christmas Eve You can say there's no such thing as Santa But as for me and Grandpa Biden, we believe He was smoking with the tune gang Ain't doing 
and just a little blow. But he thought he had a golf game and stumbled wasted out the door into the snow. When they found him Christmas morning, the secret service calmed the floor. They would have been there so much faster, but they were busy playing games with the Columbian hole. Hey. Obama got run over by a reindeer, walking from the White House Christmas Eve. You can say there's no such thing as Santa, but as for me and Grandpa Biden, we believe. We're all so proud of Grandpa Biden. Actually, we're not, but that's not new. He just cries in his pajamas and asks his magic eight ball what to do. It's not the season without Barry. No Christmas speech to make it right. And now, however, will we make it? Not hearing I and me drone on throughout the night. Obama got run over by a reindeer Walking from the White House Christmas Eve You can say there's no such thing as Santa But as for me and Grandpa Biden, we believe Now the country is in mourning Dressed in black from head to toe All except, of course, the white folk Cause Reverend Al and Jesse Jackson told them no Hope and change, it never happened A worthless legacy of crap We should have never had a POTUS Who couldn't even find his ass without a map Obama got run over by a reindeer Walking from the White House Christmas Eve You can say there's no such thing as Santa But as for me and Grandpa Biden, we believe One more time Obama got run over by a reindeer Walking from the White House Christmas Eve You can say there's no such thing as Santa But as for me and Grandpa Biden, we believe Well, Rick, does that bring back a few memories? Oh, yeah, that that was hilarious. I love that one. I oh. especially like the end when Grandma's like, at least it wasn't me this time. <laughs> oh, I know. It's so cute. I just, I thought of, I found it before we did the music special, and I thought about loading it in, but I thought, no, I want to hold these back, because they're just too good to mix in with everyday Christmas music. So, but I also love the one where, uh, you know, talked about how he had to, he thought he had a golf game and rushed out into the snow. <laughs> that just cracked me up. I was just like, oh, that sounds so much like him. And here's one more of his slow ones. Let's see what we've got this time. The holidays are no time for partisanship. So Republicans, teabaggers, I got some stuff for you too. Boehner, the orange face speaker. Had a very shiny tone And when it comes to compromise He and his party get owned <laughs> And uh, here's a special one For my friend in New Jersey Christy the fat man Is a good dear friend to me Adored by the Republicans, but loathed by the Tea Party. That one was one of my favorites. So, what do you think of those two, Rick? <laughs> I love those. Those are actually done by Jason DeWilkins, or as I like to call him, the man of a thousand voices who used to do the According to Me show, and it was a blast any time he was on. I, I love the parody work that he does, especially... His Obama impressions. He does a good Trump, too. Well, 
we've got more of them coming up because I rated hit what he left in our. St- I nothing left in our database was unscathed. I rated everything from all the shows, just like I ra- rated our databases, including our archives for the blooper reels. Oh, I'm a little sneaky one, aren't I? Yeah, but we already knew that. <laughs> or should it be moo ha ha ha? Hey, I included a few of my own bloopers, too. Have to be fair about this. All right. <clears throat> We're almost done with the Christmas ones, but I just couldn't resist those. I think let's finish out the Christmas ones. We only have a little bit left to go. There's a little something for everybody on this album. We cover all the classics, including this great Negro spiritual. Uh, go tell it on the mountain. Capitol Hill all the way to O'Hare. Go tell it on the mountain that f- is born. Latinos, you know I got something for you. Feliz Navidad. Ah, uh, Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Immigration bill is uh, muy bueno. Aye! <laughs> Start a new family tradition and pick up your copy of uh, Barack and Around the Holiday Tree, a White House celebration. You can pick it up at your local union halls, uh, your local Democratic headquarters, or because the website's now fixed, go to healthcare.gov slash holiday album and get your copy today. From my family, Sasha, Malia, Valerie Jarrett, Michelle, uh, whatever the dog's name is, we'd like to wish you season's greetings and a wonderful and safe happy holidays. Website not actually functional. Copies of this album start at $300, but you may qualify for a tax credit to offset that cost. We cannot accept payment at this time as we didn't think of that part yet. Any references to Christ or Christmas have been edited as to not to offend any other denomination, in particular atheists and Muslims. Hey, everybody. So what did you think of those, Rick? They were awesome. I played those a lot. Bring back a few memories? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I found one more that I think he did. And this describes not so much the holiday season at the White House, but I think this one almost sums up Obama's whole time in office. I'm President Barack Obama, and I approve this parody song. Good job, NSA. Now nobody likes me at all. You couldn't keep it to yourself that you were spying on phone calls. No one thinks health care will work. Looks like I'm the one to blame because the IRS targeted groups that have conservative names. Man, it seems to me Each day I find another scandal in the wind. Never knowing when snooping on journalists will begin. Immigration reform and gun control have really hit the skids. I'm scared I'm doing a worse job than George W. ever did. Sheesh. This has been Barack Obama saying, you can trust me. No, you can't! I think that one summed up a large part, at least his first term. Most of his second term, too, honestly. Like I said, I think it summed up his presidency. Then there was one I found that I just couldn't resist just because I couldn't resist it. It's not even really political. It's just funny. Chick-fil-A I could eat there seven times a day Where the people laugh and children play Oh, I'm in love with Chick-fil-A Suddenly I need waffle fries in front of me With some nuggets and a large sweet tea Oh, Chick-fil-A You set me free Kids get 
in the van so we can go there today. But their stores are closed, oh I know, cause it's Sunday. Chick-fil-A. What a dirty, rotten trick to play. Now I have to settle for Subway. Oh, I'm in love with Chick-fil-A. I think that was another oldie but a goodie from your soundboard, Rick. Oh, yeah. Now, that, what that. was the history behind that one? Uh, well, the history behind that one, actually, if you'll remember not too long ago, there was a big outcry over Chick-fil-A and uh, some decisions they had made about uh Birth control being part of their uh, insurance coverages, as well as the owner of Chick-fil-A being very outspokenly anti-gay uh, marriage. And so the lefts were boycotting Chick-fil-A left and more left. So there were a lot of us that were trying to show support. And that's kind of where that song came from. Ah, uh, See, I found the songs and I figured that it had something to do with that. But as I wasn't with the station when some of these came out, I had to guess my way through a few of them. Now, I've got one of my favorites queued up, and this one does relate to the election. You know what it is. Come on, tell me you don't know what I have queued up about one of the candidates. I really don't have any idea. That enough of a hint? (laughs) Yeah, I should have (laughs) known. Oh, the first time I heard this one, Rick... This one had me practically rolling on, literally rolling on the floor laughing. I was doubled over in laughter. All right, let's play it one last time. She's a very slinky girl. The kind you don't want for commander. She will never let her guard down Says it's her turn to be leader Oh girl She likes her emails to be secret She says it's none of your damn business When she makes her move to conceal it's Miss Harf time She's never done no wrong Oh no That girl is pretty brave now The girl's a super sneak The kind of girl you vote for Liberals are so weak that girl is pretty sleazy. That girl's a super sneak. I'd really love to trust her, but I'm not that weak. She's not right, not that right. That girl's not right with me. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. She's a super sneak, super sneak. She's super sneaky. Special girl, up, up below, you know. From Benghazi to her email, servers out of sight, and she'll keep her emails hidden. The Kimmy Wiener and her mansion, stashed in Chappaqua. What difference does it make? She says, but Trey Gowdy, he'll be waiting. She testifies, and he will grill her in the hot sea. It's such a freaky scene. That girl is pretty sneaky. The girl's a super sneak. The girl should be arrested. Five to ten at least. That girl is pretty sleazy. The girl's a super sneak. I'd really love to jail her. The girls would love fresh me. She's not right. Not that right. That girl's not right for the presidency.
another one we won't we'll have to retire after this year unless she comes back again you know she's already talking about running in 2020 so we might get the resurrected in a couple of years you never know wait a minute wait a minute you're telling me that crazy broad hasn't had enough of politics yet that's what i'm telling you they're already making noise about her trying to get in 2020 gag so you never know that may wind up being one of the parody songs that winds up being, shall we say, evergreen, because every so often it can be used over and over again. Oh, wow. Now, I got to admit, it wasn't my favorite of the year, but I'm going to hold my favorite off just a little longer. Do you have any that you're even stashing away? Uh, no, not really. Um, I think you'd manage to pull most of them and get them correlated. That one actually happened to be one of the ones that wound up being my favorite only because um, I actually started working with the writer of Barbed Wire Satire, and we were actually putting together a Hillary's email segment for about three or four months, and that song actually became the intro and the outro of that particular segment. So it was actually one of the ones that became my favorite of 2016. Well, glad to know I got your favorite in there. I figured it would be in here somewhere, and I knew you'd know it just off the first couple of notes because I knew you'd heard it a bunch. So, let's see what else I've got hiding in the wings. All right, well, while we're discussing election candidates, this one, I tripped over this one, although I never heard it played on the station. Although I missed some shows, I will admit, Rick, this one I thought was pretty good. You're a keen one. Mr. Trump, your manners are genteel. You commit verbal malpractice when your lips, they break their seal, Mr. Trump. You're as bad as Nana with xenophobic appeal. They're quite bonkers. Mr. Trump, your supporters lack control. Intellectual outliers are paid for Russian trolls, Mr. Trump. Behaviorally challenged and sycophantically stupid cornholes. A serpentine one, Mr. Trump. With a beastly riding style You have all the cogent vision Of a steaming compost pile Mr. Trump From a constitutional perspective I'd take the Steaming compost pile Manipulating Mr. Trump With influence you have bought You'd steal a family's castle For an effing parking lot Mr. Trump You're a wee peckered thin skin Of cup school blowhard Egomaniacal drum About your daughter, Mr. Trump You've really nasty thoughts Amazing even Jared didn't want to date his tot, Mr. Trump Your mouth is a bawling crap heap Overflowing with the most pathetic assortment of rhetorical whining imaginable 
Just ask Megan Kelly from Fox. Run your jowls, much, Mr. Trump. Your numbers need a bump. Your lead right now is dwindling. Your polling's in a funk, Mr. Trump. The three words that describe you best are as follows, and I quote, Bitch, ass, punk. Rick, I got one more, and this one doesn't come from a parody song, but I couldn't resist playing it as if it did. And it's just a short sound clip. I think you'll remember this, though. Now, what was that, Rick? That was Hillary Clinton making a barking noise when she was talking about eating some sort of a human lie detector. Yeah. It's pretty funny. I don't believe she was actually crazy enough to do that. Well, she does spend a lot of time with Joe Biden. Well, that's true. That's true. That may have something to do with it. But I just, I was just like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. When I heard that she barked like a dog, I thought, okay, somebody photoshopped it or edited it or made it sound like it. She really didn't do it. And I replayed the speech myself and went, she did it. What's wrong with this picture? Now, I found another one. And you know me, I cover a lot of international news. Right, Rick? Mm Mm-hmm. In fact, it's mostly what I cover. When I heard this one, I was cracking up. But it's still not my favorite. We still haven't gotten there. Are you currently waging war against the infidel? Dreaming of the day you can become a martyr and yet Allah Akbar with bombs strapped to your chest? <laughs> Stop! You don't commit acts of terror over religious fanaticism. You commit acts of terror because you don't feel you have a chance to earn a career. Well, now you can find a career that's right for you at jihadjobs.com. At jihadjobs.com, you'll find dream careers like camel breeder, goat shaver, homeless chef, desert realtor, and so much more. You'll also find those careers with competitive pay and other tremendous benefits like extended bereavement time if your family member was a suicide bomber, 48 hours of maternity leave, not for women, and much more. Introduce yourself to another bank besides the West Bank. Stop waging war against the USA and start contributing to your 401k. Stop raping, start reaping the rewards of an exciting career at jihadjobs.com. Your new career is just a stone's throw away. Jihadjobs.com Website is for men only and approved under Sharia law. All women who access the website will be stoned to death. Other restrictions apply. Consult Allah for details. Jihadjobs.com All right, Rick. Again, you're going to have to fill me in on the background on this one because it was before my time with the station. That was put together by uh, the group that used to do... uh, Shows with uh, Sam Janey, uh, the sorry, hang on. Then we had, um, well, we still have Daniel Stafford with us. He's one of the last remaining ones. And then we had uh, Real Serious Nonsense and then uh, the According to Me show. They were a group called Politatainment. They used to put together a lot of their own parodies and funny songs they play during their commercial breaks. That happens to be one of them that they ran quite often. Well, that one, when I heard it, I was laughing pretty hard so but we still haven't gotten to my favorite can you believe that rick uh no (laughs) oh you still haven't even told me which one your favorite one is but i guess we'll find out in a little bit (laughs) well i'm glad i found your favorite so and i found it just literally by happenstance All right, I've got another one that relates to the election and how the liberals reacted afterwards. Do you recall this one, Rick? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Don't you 
about that one with the liberals overreaction to the fact that Donald Trump won the election. Interesting fact about that one that was actually done in 2014 after the Democrats lost the majority in the Senate after previously losing the majority in the House and it was actually just as relevant this year because they had just as much of a meltdown when they lost the White House. Actually worse. Uh, Dan and I were actually talking about that on the episode of Rob Munson and Wright we did on Friday night. Uh, we were kind of rehashing some of the stuff and talking about the fact that the left was having a total meltdown. I mean, they were literally shutting down college campuses and bringing in therapy dogs and Play-Doh and coloring books. For And let's not forget, the majority of the people that go to college are adults. Okay, and yet they therapy dogs... Work. Play-Doh and coloring books for adults. No offense, Rick. I'm happy I live where I do and surround myself with the people I do. Because I don't know any adult around me that has ever asked for a safe space, Rick. But then, of course, I live on a military base and I'm surrounded by men and women that will run to the fight, not away from it. All right. I found one more Hillary Clinton related one. And then I promise we'll do my favorite. Okay? Okay. I just couldn't resist this one either when I heard it. You know me. I get, oh my gosh, that's great. Ah! And do you know how many hours I've spent in our library digging through some of this stuff to find it? I can imagine. Wasn't easy. All right. Here's the other one I found. Yeah, you'll have to fill me in on the story of this one, but I can guess about when this one came out. The 
Legend lives on from Chappaquiddick on down to the blue dress of intern Lewinsky. Interwebs, it's said, is secure as the head of an ambassador out in Benghazi. With a load of files, oh, 60,000 or more than the Clinton E server had emptied. The server and crew, they all proved to be screwed when the wrath of the Jarrett came calling. Hillary was the pride of the Democrat side, a disciple of famed Saul Alinsky. As arrogance goes, hers was deeper than most, with plenty of scandals for even. Concluding some terms with that white water firm, matriarch of the left, she was preening. Then later that night, the news didn't seem right. Marie Harp on TV started screeching. When Sunday shows their talking heads came on deck, saying, folks, there ain't nothing to see. Ya. At 7 p.m., deleted emails poured in. War room said, righties, they'll all the snow, yo. And into the din, Ron Fournier chimed in, saying Hillary's career was in peril. And later that night, valid denials were out of sight. Came the wreck of the Clinton E server. Does anyone know where the love of libs go when Liz Warren looks like the front runner? Historians will say Mrs. Clinton would have won the day if she just kept corruption behind her. The legend lives on from Chapel Quiddick on down to the blue dress of intern Lewinsky. Interwebs, it's said, is secure as the head of an ambassador out in Benghazi. I heard that one on the station, but I definitely found it and found it laying around. Yeah, actually, I played it on my show a couple of different times. Um, it actually was born out of the whole server mess with uh, when we started figuring out that Hillary Clinton had an unsecured server in a bathroom. Okay, first of all, I've got to state what happened in Benghazi never should have happened, and I am horrified that. We lost an ambassador, and let's see if I can remember the names. It was Sean Smith. I think it was, let me, let me look them up. I don't want to get this wrong. And I know it was four people, but I'd like to name all four. Okay, Rick? Yeah. Okay. There were Chris, Ambassador Christopher Stevens, Information Officer Sean Smith, Glenn Doherty, and Tyrone Woods, who were both former United States Navy SEALs. And I'm going to say something here. I know a little bit about the SEALs, Rick. SEALs are as tough as they come. I would put them up against anybody, anywhere, anytime. And I guarantee you, nine times out of ten, the SEAL will rise to the occasion. But the fact that an unsecured email server could have had a hand in this drove me insane. Although I think it might have been a short drive, Rick. I was going to say, save on your carbon footprint. No reason to drive insane. Just it's right around the corner. <laughs> no, I. It just it really irked me that it that something like this could have done it. And it wasn't until I was going through those emails, and I think, in fact, I think I made the point on your show 
that she gave away Ambassador Chris Stevens' location over these unsecured email server on multiple occasions. And I'm sorry, this never should have happened. But unfortunately, there's nothing we can do to change history. But, Rick, without further ado, I've got my favorite one queued up. Pretty sure I figured out which one it is, but let it rip. You think you figured out which one it is? Yep. Kind of process of elimination? I kind of figured it out about halfway through, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. All right. A long, long time yep. ago, <laughs> I can still remember how that bandwidth used to make me smile. And anything I wish to see, it was just between I and me. Without some a hole up in DC, crimping my style. But February made me shiver. The FCC on threats delivered. Regulations were adopted. Our freedoms were accosted. I can't remember if I cried when I read of rules we must abide of the legislation that wasn't looked inside the day the Google died. So bye bye to the internet guys. Plug my PC in with AC, but the bits were all fried. And don't you know the vote passed on party lines, singing we're all watching Liberty die. We're all watching Liberty die. Do you believe he loved all the lonely nation? He found fundamentally wrong. If the media tells you so And do you believe in all the tales Of Lois Lerner's lost emails Or that Benghazi was caused by a video on YouTube Well I know McConnell's a status tool And his pal boners and orange fool Between them I was fine With taxes and bills to drive me to tears And a commander-in-chief confirming my worst fears The day the Google died I started singing bye-bye to the internet guys Plug my PC in with AC but the bits were all fried And don't you know the vote passed on party lines Singing we're all watching Liberty die we're all watching Liberty die. Now for six years we've been on our own. The Constitution's a shredded tone. But that's not how it used to be. When the Beyonce sang for the Emperor and champagne, it ran onto the floor with a price tag paid by you and me. And while SCOTUS was on its ass, Obamacare was allowed to pass. The chief judge changed the law. A blasphemy we all saw. And while the POTUS read a book on Marx, Brian Williams dodged rockets in the dark. And Bill Clinton flew to Pedal Park. The day the Google died. Singing bye bye to the internet guys. I plugged my PC in with AC, but the bits were all right. And don't you know the vote passed on party lines? Singing, we're all watching Liberty die. We're all watching Liberty die. I watched Lady Liberty sing the blues, and I asked her for some happy news. She just smiled and turned away 
I went down to the Apple store Where I'd bought my gadgets years before But the man there said my apps They wouldn't play In cyberspace innovators screamed A public cried and the state is dreamed The constitution just a token The internet it was not broken And the branches I would like to see They don't include the FCC Constitution says works for you and me The day the Google died So bye-bye to the internet guys Plug my PC in with AC but the bits were all fried And don't you know the vote fast on party lines Singing we're all watching Liberty die We're all watching Liberty die We were singing bye bye to the internet guys Plugged my PC in with AC but the bits were all fried And don't you know the vote passed on party lines Singing we're all watching Liberty die All right Rick, I finally played it. That's a good one. That actually happens to be my second favorite. Like I said, the only reason they switched places because that actually was my favorite for a while. The only reason the other one became my favorite was because I started listening to bits and pieces of it about once or twice a week for about three months. Well, so it kind of grew on me. That one's actually found a place on my iPod. Nice. Oh, yeah. It's there. All right, Rick. I know... I, I bet I wonder if you know we knew we even had this many parody songs hanging around. I knew about most of them. Um, you said we've got a couple of left. I'm kind of starting to run out of ideas about what they could be, so I'm kind of curious about these last two. Well, I found this one. I don't know where. It, you know, you never know where I'm going to dig things up from. Hey now, you dumbass, peace in our time may come to pass, a president devoid of stones, grab your ankles, we're led by liberals, la da 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 ba da 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 led by liberals, hello Carrie, who you blowing, don't you think the moolah's knowing, Obama's desperate for a deal. Doot and doo doo, led by liberals. La da 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 ba da da da, led by liberals. They've dealt a centrifuge in promises to keep. We've given up sanctions and security. At best, it's a decade, the nukes will fly free. Death to America, led by liberals. Yeah, that was Third Rail Ramblers again. Oh, yeah. And that one appealed to me a lot because it was discussing the Iran nuclear deal, which, as I say on my show almost every time I... Is it worth the paper? It's written on. So that one had a special appeal to me. One more. One more. And then it's Happy New Year. Sweet. So what's the last one? All right. I found this one. 
And I believe this one's also Third Rail Ramblers. I wanted to end on that one because that's pretty much how they felt this year at the end of elections, too. But I had a feeling that one was written for the midterms. Yeah, a lot of the ones that we're actually uh, playing tonight were written specifically for the midterms in 2014, but they became relevant again because we watched the left have much of the same meltdown. So, And hopefully it will be one of the last times that we get to play them for a while because I'm hoping either they stop having meltdowns or figure out that the reason they lost is because they need to quit talking out of both sides of their mouth. But I guess we'll find out soon enough. Well, Rick, tell me your thoughts about 2016 being in the last waning hours. Can't happen soon enough. Uh, 2016 needs to go away. Uh, Looking forward to 2017, I mean, 2016 wasn't entirely negative. I mean, we founded the new station in 2016. Things have taken off a lot faster over there than over here than I'd expected. I mean, a lot of good things have happened with 2016, but watching your entire political party get gutted from the inside out, taken over by a bunch of crazy racists, and then um, basically getting to the point where you're not allowed to disagree with anybody anymore without being called names is one of the things that I'm most hoping goes away after 2016 finally makes it into the record books here in the next little bit. So looking very, very much forward to 2017. And again, just like I said in the beginning of the show, 2016 needs to die horribly in a fire quickly. Well, I'd like it to dump into the flaming dumpster on our website, on the meme section. And yes, we did found the station. Yes, I have to say for a very upstart station, we aren't doing half bad. I'm hoping we have a better year in 2017, Rick. Because quite frankly, yeah. I'm tired. As much as I love my beat, I'd like to have a day where there isn't much in the Middle East or North craziness from North Korea to report. Good luck with that. Yeah, I know. But I will say one thing about 2016 that was good. There weren't that many DOD casualties. 
Yeah, that's definitely good. Yeah, I had to put that out as a positive. I'm sorry. There, there's nothing worse than a, than that knock at the door, and I know it all too well, Rick. It is something you never truly forget. So you do learn to move on. And no, I'm not gonna break down like a one of those special snowflakes or a buttercup about it. I'm a tough cookie. It takes a lot to make me crumble, but then you know that. So yeah. All right. Well, to all our listeners and all our hosts who couldn't be here tonight because this was kind of hastily planned, Happy New Year! Let's hope 2017 is better than 2016. That's all I have to say. I think we can only go up from here. Although I have a feeling that we may have a new few new parodies coming our way. I hope so. Well, there's Lord Cheesy Poof in office. <laughs> This is true. There could be a lot more parodies to come, I'm sure. I mean, come on. He's got one, but I'd like to see a bunch more. All right. Well, thank you, and good night. So, Dan, your turn. Tell 2016 to get lost. Uh, I'll just tell 2016 to get bent. That works. That <laughs> works. Good thing I'm going out, the, out, out with 2016 with a glass of wine in my hand, because I've had it <laughs> with this year.